Hey, this is Alex of Dark Vision Sprite Lights. The company Dehancer reached out and asked me if I could make a video about their plugin Dehancer Pro. Due to the fact that I'm already a user and have created quite a few professional jobs with this plugin, I agreed immediately. By the way, with a promo code DVBL, you can get a 10% discount on Dehancer Pro. The links are in the description. Let's get started then. I work, edit and grade in DaVinci Resolve 18.5 and all of the shots were taken on a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera original, the old one, with a Mikey 12mm MFT. All of the footage was shot in Cine DNG. First, I go to the raw settings. On decode using, I choose clip and on the color signs, I choose Gen 4. Then go to the color page and select Dehancer Pro from the effects library, drag and drop it onto a node. In this case, I did some denoising beforehand. So that's this one. Usually it's recommended to place the plug-in at the end of your processing chain and then add some sharpening after Dehancer. But in my experience and workflow, it works quite well for raw files too. You can now choose the camera. The shot was taken, as I've already mentioned before, on the original Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, but we've converted the file to Gen 4, which means that we're able to handle it as it was shot on a BMPCC 4K. So we go to Choose Camera, Blackmagic Design, Pocket 4K, and the format, it was shot on film. So, clear changes can already be seen. I tend to change two things right at the beginning. To see the progress a little bit better, I deactivate grain. And uh, just because I really like it, I choose Kodak and Dura Glossy Paper on the print tab. The next setting I'm about to change is under Film tab. Here you can find a big amount of film stocks from motion picture films like the Kodak Vision 3 to color negative films like the Aqua Color 100 to color positive films like the Fujichrome Velvia 100 to a lot of other film types like black and white exotic, instant or cross-processed films. Due to the fact that it's one of my favorites, I go for the Kodak Aerocolor. Now let's go to the input corrections. Exposure compensation. This setting can be used to compensate for the exposure errors of the source media. Temperature and tint compensation. These settings technically work in similar manner, but in relation to the temperature and the tint of the source. The fringe helps to deal with the chromatic aberrations visible at the edges that may interfere with some of the dehancer effects such as halation and bloom. As a creative tool, push and pull allows you to vary color contrast look of a scene within a selected film profile. The film developer tool allows you to make your own development recipe depending on the source material, shooting conditions and creative tasks. Here you can control the contrast, the gamma, the color separation and the boost of the colors. Film compression. Usually on a negative film, clipping in the highlights occurs much later than on a digital camera. To emulate the film-like compressed tonal range, D 
Eddie Hanser invented the film compression tool. In the expand section, you can fix the white or black point of the footage. One of my favorite tabs is a print. In most cases, I set the profile, as mentioned before, to Kodak Endura glossy paper. Under color head, you can fine tune the colors to encounter unwanted color shift or oversaturation. So, next, film grain. First things first, negative grain is more pronounced in the highlights and the image has a slightly higher micro contrast, which is more typical for negative films. Positive grain uses the classic algorithm that reproduces a softer grain, which is less pronounced in the highlights and is more typical for positive films. Analog is the original type of grain, whereas digital is the high performance simplified grain. Up here you can take full control over the size, the amount, the resolution, shadows, midtones and the chroma. Halation is the film emulsion effect visible as the local red orange halos around the bright light sources, specular highlights and contrasting edges. Bloom emulates the combined effect of light dispersion on the boundaries of contrasting image areas which originates in the optical system and then amplified in the emulsion layers. So here you can clearly see the nice effect that is added with this bloom tab. I think vignette is quite self-explanatory. You can work on exposure size, feather, which controls the amount of blur applied to the vignette circle, aspect ratio, and the center of the vignette. The film breath effect is an accidental change in exposure, contrast, and color from frame to frame as the film moves. Period determines the number of frames in which color, contrast and exposure vary. The exposure, tonal contrast and color parameters determine the amplitude of fluctuations. Gate wave stands for mechanical swinging of a film strip while it's being pulled through a frame window in a film camera, projector or video coding device. It's often simulated intentionally to breathe live into a digital camera. A nice little feature is the monitor section. Here you can check false color and clipping. The tonal impact slider is the single parameter in this group that controls the overall impact of all the effects engaged in the Hanser plugin. One of my main favorite tools is the LUT generator. Due to the fact that the Hanser Pro is a quite resource demanding tool, it's quite cool to have the opportunity to export a LUT with your very own look. Under the options, you'll find normal, fast quality, and high, slow. I can highly recommend Dehancer Pro to anyone who likes organic and glossy film look. And with the promo code DVBL, you can get 10% off when purchasing Dehancer Pro. 
I hope you found the video helpful and enjoyable. And finally, a few before and after shots.